Hi everyone, Happy New Year. Welcome to the 10th episode of Phenomenal Woman Wednesday. I am your host, Dr. Saran Nataki. Thank you for joining. Welcome to Power 365 Phenomenal Woman Wednesdays. This podcast will address issues ranging from what is a phenomenal woman? Are you enough? Community service, paying it forward, the manifestation of dreams with words and action, the power in being a woman, the men who support phenomenal women, fashion, and much more. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. It's been quite a while since we've last spoken. Um, Welcome to episode 10. So this is the first episode of Phenomenal Woman Wednesday for 2019. And I'm so excited to be back here sharing content with you and um, and really just, um, you know, sharing um, my story. So um, for those of you who don't know, uh, this past summer, my my dear mother passed away. And so um, in light of that, I took some much needed time to to grieve and reflect um, so that I could, you know, fully be present with you and and really be able to um, to be able to facilitate this podcast from a place of of wellness. And so it took me some time to get there. But here I am. And I'm very excited to be here. So um, thank you for your patience. And thank you for those of you who have tuned in today and are excited to start this journey for 2019. So the first thing I'd like to say is that even despite uh, the challenges that I experienced over 2018 with the transition of, um, you know, just really adjusting to a new normal with the passing of my mother and how that impacts my family and um, and just, you know, everything that goes along with um, uh, that kind of life change. Um, even despite all of that, I had such a blessed year. Um, I was able to accomplish uh, many things over the course of the year that I'd set out to accomplish. And, um, and today, I am devoting this podcast to um, how to plan for the new year. So planning for 2019 we're already a week into uh, the new year, but it is never too late to plan and set your goals. And so I just wanted to share some things that I do to help plan my, um, to do my goal setting for the year. Now, many people use electronic means for goal setting. They use their iPhones, iPads, computer. Um, I am actually a pen and paper girl when it comes to that. I've done the other things in the past, but I find that having pen and paper, really sitting down and committing myself to, um, you know, writing things out, planning ahead. Um, it really helps, it helps me stay a lot more organized and track things more efficiently and, um, and just really forces me to be accountable that way. That works for me. But whatever works for you, uh, you know, please go ahead and utilize those tools. And so um, I have some very... Um, I guess I, I've had to follow a ritual when I when I uh, do my goal setting for the year. I find that um, if I, you know, plan out um, a set of goals, let's say I, I have, um, you know, five uh, goals that I want to accomplish over the course of the year, and I just say, hey, I want to accomplish these five things, and I write them down, and, and that's it. Uh, that really doesn't ever work out for me. <laughs> um, so I write them down. I kind of, you know, look back at them, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm kind of working on that. I'm kind of working on that. And I'm kind of working on that. So for me, um, I like to really dissect my goals into actions, and then uh, really set up a system where I can really, um, you know, do progress checks and and things like that. So I'm just going to share with you the steps that I take to do this. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I identify, you know, key areas of focus. So what are the main areas in my life for which I would like to focus and really outline what my goals are? And so um, for me, I have um, five key areas um, that I've identified for 2019, and they include finance, fitness, professional, family, and then my marriage, okay? So those are the five areas that I'm choosing to focus upon for 2019. The next thing that I do is I identify the overarching goals that I wish to achieve uh, during 2019 in each of those key areas. So 
I may have some overarching finance goals for 2019. I might have an overarching fitness goal. So maybe um, for finance, I would like to have a personal savings of, I don't know, let's say $40,000. I say I'm going to, for 2019, my overarching goal is to have a personal savings of uh, $40,000. And then I might have a fitness goal of, um, let's say if weight loss was, um, something that I was shooting for, then I might say if I was, you know, let's say 20, 20 pounds, I would wish to lose 20 pounds in 2019. So that's my overarching goal for the year. So by the, the year's end, I hope to accomplish those things. And then, and so on, I would identify something for my professional, um, focus, family, and also for my marriage. Okay. Next, um, I break down those overarching goals, the annual goals that I wish to complete by the year end into quarterly goals. So I um, break them into quarterly goals that will help facilitate um, accomplishing the annual goals. So let's just go back and use the finance goal of $40,000. If I have an annual goal of saving $40,000 over the course of the year, then maybe my quarterly goal is going to be to save $10,000 for that quarter, for each quarter, okay? The next thing that I do is I, um, once I have the quarterly goals, I identify monthly goals to facilitate the quarterly goals. So um, I have a, a quarterly goal of saving $10,000. So what do I need to do each month to save that $10,000. And maybe there are some key steps I might identify. Maybe I'm going to do more meal planning. I'm going to cut out excess spending in areas that I've identified to um, where I have room, where I'm, I'm having more waste or, um, you know, ba you, you get the idea. So I identify the things that I'm going to do during each month to facilitate my saving the uh, $10,000 in that quarter. Okay. Then what I also do is I um, provide myself a monthly progress report. And that monthly progress report is um, it's kind of a check-in with myself. I, I actually, you know, have a sheet in my planner that's already in there for each month where I'm going to check in and write down for each of those key areas how things are going. What do I need to adjust to make certain that I'm going to be meeting my goals for that month? What, you know, am I being, um, do I need to be more aggressive or are there some other things that I might tweak? Everything's going great. Maybe I can, you know, those kinds of things. So I, I check in with myself to make sure that I am on target with my monthly goals. And then um, based upon my monthly progress, I use that to determine if I need to make any adjustments to my quarterly goals. So um, you know, if there's something unexpected that comes up, you know, life happens, um, and I need to make an adjustment from, you know, quarter one to quarter two to, to facilitate really still hitting my goal at the end of the year, I can make those adjustments and, and, and do some things a little differently over quarter two and quarter three and so on. All right, so I, after I've you know, checked in with my quarterly progress report and I'm really honest with myself and I determine whether or not um, I'm really honoring, you know, my commitment to myself and I'm able to, you know, make some adjustments personally. So not so much um, punishing myself, but um, really um, rewarding myself if I've been, I've been, you know, meeting my goals and everything's going great. And I ha if I haven't uh, met my goals or there's some um, um, slightly off target and I can identify what actually brought me there that I was in control with, then I'm going to, you know, make some adjustments to, um, you know, be smarter with my time, uh, be smarter with my money, be smarter with, you know, whatever it is that I'm needing to do to make the adjustment, I go ahead and I do that. So, um, for me, like I mentioned, I use a, a planner. There's so many different options out there in terms of if you're interested in, um, you know, using pen and paper um, to, you know, have, organize an agenda. There's all kinds of YouTube videos out there on um, planning. Some people really get very serious with it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I use, um, I happen to use a luxury planner. I just, I really enjoy that and um, I'm able to replenish it and, you know, customize it to, you know, how I might like. But by no means are you obligated to go out and buy a luxury planner. There are so many options that are very feasible. And I will provide some links um, in the show notes that um, highlight some some really um, great resources that I've used um, in my own personal planning, as well as um, you know planners that I purchased um, in you know prior that have been really useful that I found uh, to really meet my needs and um, and facilitate in keeping track of my goals. So I will absolutely pro- uh, provide that. Um, one other thing that I would like to mention, um, I recently. Uh, stumbled across a book, um, The 5 A.M. Miracle, and I have really um, found that to be very, very, very useful in my life. So what it is is um, waking up at 5 a.m. every morning to facilitate your day. So it's about mastering your morning so that you can master your day. The 5 A.M. Miracle is written by author Jeff Sanders, and it also comes with a workbook and, you know, downloadables that you can utilize to um, really plan, help you with your goal setting, even, you know, your personal goal setting. And it has been really helpful for me in terms of, you know, really finding time for myself. So how many of us um, that are moms, that have a career, um, even if you're a dad and you ju- you're just juggling, just trying to have enough time for yourself to um, not just be present for your family and your work obligations and commitments um, external to home, but just your personal time for your personal development. Well, the 5 a.m. miracle really does outline how you can use that, um, that time in the morning um, to really develop a ritual for yourself so that you have time to not only um, exercise, meditate, uh, plan your day, and just really get the day going. And it's about also, also tackling those uh, tasks that take more of your time early in the day so that um, you're not left trying to squeeze those things in at the end of the day. Now, keep in mind, 5 a.m. is um, kind of an arbitrary number. It really depends upon your schedule. For me, 5 a.m. works. It's, um, you know, hours before um, my children have to wake up and I have to facilitate their day and, you know, get them off to school and, and whatnot. So 5 a.m. works for me, but um, let's say you don't have children or your work day is a lot more flexible and your day ends up, you know, running later. You know, maybe you can have a later start time. Um, or maybe, you know, if you... Um, have a, a non-traditional work schedule, then maybe you can, you know, your 5 a.m. is, you know, at night. Um, whatever time it is that you have identified for yourself, the whole premise of this 5 a.m. miracle is just the miracle of mastering your day by getting a head start, having a ritual that doesn't allow you to um, be in a position of rushing and um, you have had time to really meditate Um, you know, connect with your spiritual self, you know, making certain that you are complete and whole, um, not just in the physical sense, but spiritually, and that you have um, intention, you know, set for your day so that, you know, things work out a lot more positively for you. Um, I have found that when I'm able to, you know, I'm not perfect. (laughs) My 5 a.m., you know, sometimes, uh, you know, ends up being a a different kind of morning. You know, sometimes I've you know, I've slept through. But when I am able to really um, stay committed to that 5 a.m. miracle, it really does make a difference. You know, um, sometimes there are unforeseen events. And, you know, of course, um, if you end up having on the occasion to stay up late, you know, for whatever reason, um, it could be a family event or, you know, just something that's not typical, um, then, of course, uh, you know, by all means, it's best to get your sleep because being sleep deprived doesn't really facilitate, um, you know, it just, it's not really productive. I found that um, when I've stayed up late and um, really worked through um, those critical hours and having to still try to get up early and perform, it really, it's just counterintuitive. I'm better off just taking the sleep and then, um, you know, just jumping in and, 
and accepting what I can do that day and reassigning things for the next day. So that has been really helpful for me. So I encourage you, uh, if you're, you know, interested, um, it's available in Audible so that you're able to, you know, download it and listen to it. Um, if you're an Audible person like me, um, it's almost like I can't even read physical books anymore because of Audible. It's just so awesome. I can get so much done while also taking in information. So I find that to be um, the best way that I consume um, books these days. Um, with that, I think that will conclude today's episode. Um, it's just something to jump into the new year. Let's get a fresh start. Just remember that you are awesome. You are in control of your own destiny. And if you can't plan something great for yourself, no one else will. So plan something phenomenal for your year. I wish you all well, and I will see you here on Phenomenal Woman Wednesday next Wednesday. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to Power 365 Phenomenal Woman Wednesdays. I believe that every woman gifts the universe with her own strengths and unique characteristics. Simply because she is born, the universe benefits. Every woman is growing, learning, and evolving. On this channel, only positive seeds are sown, no matter how flawed the soil. Take care and have a phenomenal Wednesday.